job with this. It's very, very, very nice. It's very sweet. This isn't going to be like that. <laughs> so first of all, on behalf of Greg and Ashley, we would like to thank everybody who has made the trip to be a part of our special day. I know many of you have come from very far. I always get a kick of seeing what people will do for an open bar. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Dax Garrison. I'm a good friend of Greg's, and I was honored that he asked me to be his best man. He knows that I'm shy and often try to stay away from attention, yet he still thought that I would be able to do this. Uh, so actually, we, we pulled the weather up. You know, I didn't know if it was going to work out, and I was really worried that if it rained today, a couple hours later, when the 700 person told you that it's good luck for it to rain on your wedding day, we were going to find out that it's good luck to have a wine glass smashed up against your head. And I wasn't really sure. But the one thing that we knew, regardless of if it rained, if we were outside, if we were in the house, was that you were going to look beautiful. And you certainly have not disappointed. So Roger, Cynthia, I know we don't know each other all that well, but Congratulations. You've raised a beautiful, smart, hardworking young woman, and you should be very proud. And I, I know that you are. Jeff? <laughs> Melissa? You guys did what you could. <laughs> Sometimes you can just do your best, and that's not it. How you can do. I've known from the instant that he met you, that you were the one. I've never seen him this happy. I've never seen him walk around and carry himself as he knows that he's complete. And I never, ever thought I would see him trade that Corvette and, <laughs> and chase the Corvettes. <laughs> I'll be married 10 years in June, and I still got mine in the garage. <laughs> so I've known Greg for a long time. His family and my family were very close growing up. So we were out at the lake together. We were around family gatherings all the time. And there was a picture I tried really hard to find, and I couldn't come up with it. It's a couple of my cousins, and me, and Greg, and and Greg's got to be about five, and maybe me, 11. And I looked hard for that picture, and I couldn't find it, which was terribly upsetting. It's the last photographic evidence that I was once taller than Greg. <laughs> and I couldn't come up with it. But if I find it, I'll get it to you. And we, even, we kind of look like brothers in that picture, you and I. And most of you probably haven't gathered this, but Greg and I are both only children. It probably it comes as a complete shock. But it's been about the last 10 years that I've gotten to know Greg very well. When Greg graduated from college, I convinced him that he should come back home and work with me at the bank. And I would teach him what I knew about lending, whatever that was, and that I promised him that he would be great. And he soaked up whatever knowledge I had for him. And He's made me very proud. I admire the way that he takes care of his customers and how hard he works to take care of folks. It's been a lot of fun the last 18 months or so working in the same building because apparently all of us blonde haired, uh, blue eyed guys look alike. Somebody would come into the bank, meet with me or Greg for a little while, come back in three days later, confuse him for me or vice versa, and I'd immediately think, Maybe I did my gross burn. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm down a couple pounds. And then I would notice that Greg didn't eat lunch all week, and he'd be measuring himself, make sure that he wasn't shrinking. Uh, so that hurt a but uh, so recently, my little girl, the pretty one back in the back with the pink cast, she broke her arm, and she was asking me the other night, "Daddy, have you broken a bone?" His mommy broken a bone, went through the cousins and the aunts and uncles. And she said, what about Uncle Greg? Has Uncle Greg ever broken a bone? 
And I said, no, sweetie, he hasn't. But that's because Melissa carried him around to me this morning. <laughs> these boxes of coin from the vault all the way to his teller window for this big change order for one of our customers. Only later did somebody tell me, hey, don't let him do that. You don't get the coin. So two days later, first week of July, it's 104 degrees outside. I come pulling up to the bank in my Tahoe, and it's sitting about like this. And there's $8,000 of nickels and dimes in the back of the car for Greg to carry from the car all the way to the vault. I think that was the last time you tried to book one over. <laughs> but there was, uh, there was also a time I left him on the roof in Irvington at 5 o'clock on a Friday, but um, I didn't mean to do that. I, really didn't. I had a lot of my mind. That place could be difficult at times. So Greg walked into my office, however many months ago it was, and he said, um, I'm going to ask someone to marry me. He said, this person is smart, good looking, hard working. Um, and immediately I thought, oh, he's gonna propose to me. And I don't know how I'm gonna handle this. But after he sorted everything out, he let me know that he was gonna propose to Ashley. And I, I thought he was without a doubt making a great choice. I've got to know Ashley a lot in the last few years. And I love her like a sister. And um, if everybody can raise their glass. To Greg and Ashley, many great years of happiness to come. Cheers. <laughs>